When I look at the lives of the young people I am here to introduce, I can't help but compare their lives and the path they have chosen to the life of Nelson Mandela. The one thing he did, which both of them have done, was to be inspired by having suffered injustice to take action to ensure that nobody else suffered the same injustice and that nobody else was denied the right to human dignity, the right to equality, and other human rights as protected in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights simply because they were different. Like Nelson Mandela, these two young leaders used their life experiences to master the courage, compassion, and apply their skills to make a difference against social injustice. They've used their skills to provide a platform for advancing human rights, primarily for the LGBT community. As a public protector, I have learned that it is important that people speak out when they see injustice. And these young people have done just that. But speaking out is not enough. It solves the problem partly because it gets people to notice. Taking action to change that which you can change completes the picture. That's what they have done. At the young age of 26, Melissa Bryant from St. Kitts and Nevis is an assistant communications officer at the Commonwealth Secretariat. She spends her free time pursuing social justice for the LGBT community. Her notion of justice is what I refer to, a paradigm that transcends just us. She herself is heterosexual, but she hasn't said it's not my fight. She lives in a community where being gay is still considered a crime. She's using her communication skills to make sure that people know their rights and to advocate for the change in the laws to ensure that the LGBT community is embraced like all other groups in society. She believes that young leaders have to create the world they want to inherit, and I agree with her. The second young person I have to introduce, who exactly, like Melissa, has a notion of social justice that goes beyond just us, is the president of the Belize Youth Empowerment for Change. His full -time, the full-time job that he does, sorry, the full-time job that Kevin Mendes does involves being a counselor at the National AIDS Program, Ministry of Health in Belize. Kevin Mendes, teaches young people about the rights of 
the LGBT community. But that's not all. He is involved in education around HIV, teenage pregnancy, and other matters that affect young people. He has a degree in natural resources management and uses his skills though to advance human rights beyond sexual orientation. The two young leaders will be speaking about human rights being something that is deserved by every human being purely because you are a human being. That human dignity is a right of all persons. And for all of those rights though to be realized, those who can do something must do something. Let's listen to firstly, Melissa Bryant, then Kevin Mendes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. In no less than 10 Caribbean nations, the consensual sexual act between men is still a criminal offense. Gay men can face up to 25 years imprisonment under inherited draconian anti-LGBT laws. We are fighting this discrimination. The LGBT population in Belize recently achieved a landmark victory by winning a lawsuit made to the Attorney General, claiming that our Constitution, Section 53, violated our human rights by criminalizing anal sex. But we are braced for a backlash. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights reported 594 hate-related killings of LGBT people across the Americas between January 2013 and March 2014. The fear of reporting crimes in the Caribbean means that many more violent and discriminatory acts against the LGBT community go undocumented. Polling tells us that 60% of LGBT people in St. Kitts and Nevis have suffered from employment discrimination and verbal abuse. Members of this community also face isolation from their families, threats of physical violence, and often live in fear for their lives. The same prejudices exist in Belize. In 2014, I had to leave my home village in search of safety after receiving threats that my house would be burnt down while I was asleep because gay men are considered a bad influence on children. In January 2015, while I was asleep, somebody that I knew attempted to stab me while calling me the devil for being gay. A month after that attack, a close friend of mine was murdered. Emerson was stabbed 15 times on the back, shot on the head, and his body was thrown in the river. Two, a year and a half after this murder, the case has not been resolved. Young people must play an active role in shaping a world that's free from LGBT discrimination. Radio offers a way to change attitudes. I've hosted and produced a radio show called Voices in St. Kitts and Nevis that has over 35,000 listeners. And I deliberately included LGBT people in the show. And initially, a lot of the audience was angry and incredulous, asking why I was even discussing LGBT issues. But the presence on the airwaves of LGBT speakers has meant that the audience and the public are slowly starting to accept the LGBT community and their human rights. And this growing acceptance is vital when we are seeking to overturn criminalization of LGBT people and associated discriminatory laws. And the general community and policymakers can be allies in the equality movement. I worked with the St. Kitts National Youth Parliament Association's Know Your Rights campaign to reach 2,000 individuals with messages on several human rights themes with LGBT tolerance being a major pillar. Most countries around the world have signed treaties that hold our governments liable to respect our human rights, and it is important to educate people about these rights. In Belize, I have helped to form an umbrella network, KCAT, which has supercharged the equality movement. KCAT safeguards the rights of LGBT people, those living with HIV and sex workers. In 2015, our campaign reached 1,900 men to come forward to get tested for HIV. KCAT holds public forums and debates to make Belizeans aware of issues faced by these minority groups. 
The removal of the legal barrier to work with the LGBT population in Belize sets a platform for increased health and justice. The United Belize Advocacy Movement has documented 146 discrimination and abuse cases towards LGBT people between 1995 and 2015. Only now can lawyers begin to document and bring these cases to court so that justice may ultimately be served. It has also enabled the Belize with Empowerment for Change NGO to meet with the government and regional HIV AIDS officials to start discussing anti-discrimination legislation. As part of our 2015-2016 human rights campaigns for zero discrimination, we as LGBT advocates have been collaborating with businesses and the media to promote acceptance through LGBT-friendly signs. Displays at their, at their premises and in promotional campaigns, these signs make customers aware of issues uh, faced by the LGBT community and promote good sexual and reproductive health. And we hope that this court ruling in Belize will pave the way for decriminalization of LGBT communities, not just in St. Kitts and Nevis, but right across the Caribbean. And all of you can play a role in delivering these changes by working with governments, civil society and local activists to pass, enforce and promote anti-discrimination laws for LGBT people. Unity is key in the elimination of discrimination against LGBT people. Young leaders, we must actively demand this. Let us break the silence. We cannot lose another brother or sister to hate crime. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.